So our first speaker will be DBJ's managing director, Mr. Milverton Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds joined DBJ as managing director in 2007 after distinguished service in the private and public sectors, ultimately heading entities such as Life of Jamaica, National Housing Trust, among others. Over the past 15 years, he has transformed the DBJ into what you see today, an institution delivering a range of successful initiatives, supporting economic growth, entrepreneurship, job creation and development, all while maintaining the bank's stability. While these initiatives have included support for large investments, strategic investments, or BPO sector, public and private partnerships and privatization, venture capital and private equity, Mr. Reynolds has a, a soft spot for MSMEs and he has driven a raft of programs over the years to promote growth and access to finance for thousands of businesses all along the business cycle. Loans, guarantees, capacity building, grants, and equity. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Milverton Reynolds to deliver the opening remarks. Thank you, thank, thank you, Edison, for that very generous introduction. Dr. The Honorable Nigel Clark, the Minister of Finance and the Public Service, who we were hoping would have been here with us in person, but unfortunately is not able to do so and will be joining us digitally. Mr. Edison Galbraith, our General Manager for Channels, Relationships, and Marketing at the DBJ, members of the media, um, all those who are joining us on Zoom. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you for joining us both physically here at the Jamaica Pegasus and online for this very important event that the Development Bank of Jamaica is hosting today. Before I get started, I'd like to officially add my words of welcome to Dr. The Honorable Nigel Clark, the Minister of Finance and the Public Service, who has graciously agreed to clear his diary and to participate in this launch. As I said, he will be doing so digitally. Welcome, Minister, and we thank you for your participation as our guest speaker. I'd also like to welcome our directors, who I know uh, will be joining us via Zoom. There's no question that COVID-19 has created havoc and untold disruption in every area of life, including the marketplace, and of course, we here in Jamaica are no exception. We read and we hear daily in the media the struggles that the local, micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises have endured in trying to navigate the effects of COVID-19 from the loss or slowdown of business and revenue, inability to repay debts and layoffs of employees in far and, and in far too many instances, closures. The impact on the local businesses has been particularly hard because essentially of how we do business. We are largely rooted in the traditional way of conducting our affairs. That is to say, in-person, paper-based, mortar and brick operation, and so on. Therefore, if there is one overriding thing that the pandemic has taught us is that businesses have to and must change if they are to survive. And so we are here today to tell you how the Development Bank of Jamaica, in collaboration with the Ministry of Finance, plan to help the local MSME sector to do just that. 
in an effort to alleviate the conditions caused by the pandemic and in the process rescue many MSMEs, the Ministry of Finance under the leadership of Dr. Clark introduced the social and economic recovery vaccine, otherwise called the SURF program, made up of $3 billion in low-cost loans to help MSMEs recover from the debilitating results of the pandemic by going digital. Minister Clark has mandated the DBJ to create several products and services under the SERP program to make it not only easy and accessible, but also inclusive for micro, small, and medium-sized businesses to get back on track. As you are aware, the chief reason for the existence of the Development Bank of Jamaica is to facilitate economic growth and development, the economic growth and development of Jamaica by providing development financing grants and other forms of assistance for all levels of the entrepreneurial sector. We have, I can confidently say, carried out our mandate successfully, and it is mentioned some of the programs and products that we have introduced. And in fact, I would like to point out that the DBJ was the first, if not was among the first, if not the first government agency to announce a COVID-19 stimulus package to the business sector in March 2020 when the pandemic showed up in Jamaica. Hence, we were gratified to be asked by the Minister of Finance to implement the DBJ SURF program, and I am pleased to be hosting this event today to bring to you once again an incredible set of products and services that is being provided to the MSME sector of the economy. And in a few minutes, you will hear all the details of the DBJ SERV program. But before we do, I can tell you that SERV is a game changer. It will allow businesses to pivot, to recover, and indeed to grow. It will also allow businesses at all levels to change their old ways of operating and switch to technology to allow them to recover and begin to grow again. And to borrow a phrase that is currently being frequently used these days by the members of the business sector, MSMEs must find that they must digitalize or die. The COVID-19 pandemic has catapulted us into a new world of doing business and we must adapt to the new ways of doing business by adopting technology, getting comfortable with the possibilities and benefits that technology provides so that when the panda pandemic ends, and it will end, we will still be standing. We, the DBJ and the Ministry of Finance, are providing the assistance that is required to make the private sector vibrant and sustainable. But we cannot do it, do it alone. And therefore, I am calling on three sets of stakeholders to join us in the effort to digitally transform the business landscape in Jamaica. First of all, I am calling on the lenders, the financial institutions, to link with the DBJ in delivering the serve loans that are needed for investment, retooling, and providing working capital. And we are pleased to announce at this launch that several financiers have already made commitments to participate in the DBJ serve program. Indeed, as of now, we have commitments of over 700 million dollars from these institutions, and they include Wilco Finance, First Heritage Cooperative Credit Union, 
Bold Investments, Lasco Financial, National Commercial Bank, JMMB, Sajikor Bank Limited, and First Global Bank. I will go further to tell you that three of these institu institutions, Wilco Finance, Bull Investments, and First Heritage Cooperative Credit Union have applied for and have already received their first disbursements. By the way, the 700 million that I mentioned just now, it's really the first tranche, the first quarter um, allotment that has been committed. And so we encourage many more commercial banks, credit union, credit unions, microfinance institutions, and other lenders, particularly those who are already accredited as approved financial institutions um, by, by the DBJ, to participate in the program as we rebuild the MSME sector and give it the means by which it can withstand the shocks of the pandemic. Secondly, we are calling on the suppliers of goods and services in the technology field to prepare themselves to meet the demand which we expect will come from business operators beginning right after this launch as, we seek, as they seek the tools to go digital. We at the DBJ are using this opportunity to stimulate a sustainable private sector-led business-to-business market for digitization, services, and financing that will outlive the DBJ serve program. And to this end, I am indeed pleased to announce that the DBJ is entering an arrangement with the Jamaica Computer Society, now called the Jamaica Technology and Digital Alliance, in which a website will be created that will list all the suppliers of digital technology goods and services across the island, allowing business, business owners to easily identify their needs and choose their preferred supplier. Thirdly, and perhaps the most important of the three sets of stakeholders to whom I am appealing, is the MSME community. We are imploring all business operators to take advantage of this really incredible opportunity. The DBJ serve program is essentially a lifeline to the business sector to digitalize or die. Take the Go Digital grant. It will allow you take your business online through e-commerce, web marketing, installing online payroll systems, e-payments, video conferencing, and many, many more services, which will make the difference between thriving and dying. Take the Go Digital loan to acquire computer, computers, software, and other goods to advance your business operations and take the recovery loan, use it for working capital, new capital expenditure projects, debt consolidation, refinancing high interest business loans, clearing up of your overdrafts, and indeed, you can use it to finance your credit card debt that you use to put in the in the, in the business. That can be refinanced also under this facility. Please note that both the Go Digital and the recovery loans can be used, and this is really some great assistance, that it can be used in conjunction with the DBJ's voucher for technical assistance grant program and, importantly, our partial credit guarantee, the credit enhancement facility, which provides guarantees of up to $30 million or 80% of the value of the loan for larger loans. And for small loans, 
of 11 million or below, we guarantee up to 90%. We encourage you to act quickly, for indeed, the funds under the SERV program will be available only for a relatively short period of time. The agreement we have with the Ministry of Finance is that these funds have to be committed by March 2022. And you know we really don't want to have to give back any of these funds to the Ministry of Finance. So we truly ask you to act quickly and to ensure that all of these funds are committed long before March 2022. The government and the DBJ has made it very easy and affordable for Jamaican businesses to pivot, recover, and grow in spite of the challenges thrown up by the pandemic. So there is no reason for you to fail, and we again urge you to act now. In spite of the work from home protocols, the lockdowns, the DBJ is open for business, and so I encourage you to visit our website www.dbjserve.com. Use our DBJ Please Contact Me form and our WhatsApp line 876-371-3830. I repeat that. 876-371-3830. Or email us at mail at dbankjm.com to get additional information on the DBJ serve program. Again, let me urge our SME, SME members of the SME sector to truly make use of this game-changing opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds, for those remarks. Ladies and gentlemen on Zoom, on social media, let's see that virtual applause going up. Let's see those likes, those shares on hashtag DBJ serve loan, DBJ go digital loan, hashtag DBJ MSME recovery loan. So you've heard from our managing director, the serve facility, our DBJ serve program has now been officially opened. Our financial institutions have started utilizing it. We're getting those commitments in. We're working with all the trade associations, supplier groups to get everybody on board. But right now we're going to go a little bit deeper into the specifics of the products. We're going to unpack some of these products for you so that we're going to give you a quick guide to the features. We're going to encourage you to take very good notes see what fits for you, and put them in your cart, right? So the next feature we're going to have is a recorded video, a pre-recorded video highlighting the features of the products delivered by Ms. Kerry Ann Price, the project manager for the DBJ Serve program. Hi, my name is Carrie Ann Price, Project Manager for the DBJ Serve Jamaica program. Under the Serve Jamaica program, the DBJ has launched three new exciting products to assist MSMEs to get right back on track from this COVID-19 pandemic. They are the Go Digital Voucher, DBJ MSME Go Digital Loan, and DBJ MSME Recovery Loan. The Go Digital Voucher for technical assistance offers a grant to cover the cost of attaining business services up to a maximum of 300,000 inclusive of GCT. This grant is only available to micro and small businesses with revenues not exceeding $75 million annually. Now, 
Also under this program, business owners can access a Go Digital Voucher to transform their businesses electronically. Some of the services available under this grant include, but are not limited to the following, general business services such as accounting and electronic payroll system, HR applications, CRM software, electronic marketing, including social media, website development, e-commerce platform, and payment gateways. Business productivity tools are also available and include video conferencing and electronic records management. Please note that the grant cannot be used to acquire hardware or for working capital support, the purchase of equipment, and payment for business operational expenses. The Government of Jamaica, through the Ministry of Finance and Public Service, has provided an additional $1 billion through the DBJ's Go Digital Loan Facility. With the Go Digital Loan, micro, small, and medium sized enterprises with revenues not exceeding $425 million per annum will be able to access the loans through several financial institutions to fund hardware, software, and other services for digitalizing their businesses. Also, business owners can use this loan to acquire laptops, smartphones, portable point-of-sale machines, e-commerce, and digital payment solutions. Also obtainable under this facility is the acquisition of and training in software, including cloud infrastructure, cybersecurity, digital productivity tools, and business applications, such as accounting software, HR, and payroll systems. The features of this facility include, but are not limited to the following. A loan limit per sub borrower of $800,000, at a maximum interest rate to the sub borrower of 2% per annum, which is fixed on the reducing balance. Also repayment over a period of up to three years, a maximum moratorium on the principal of three months can also be facilitated where the project plan justifies it. And also, business owners can borrow up to 90% of the project costs but are required to provide a contribution of 10%. Now, let's talk about the MSME Recovery Loan. In addition to the MSME Go Digital Loan Facility, the government has also provided an additional $2 billion through the DBJ's MSME Recovery Loan Facility, which enables lenders to reduce the debt service burden for MSMEs with viable projects that are either seeking to expand, pivot to take on new opportunities, or to refinance high-cost debts. This will ultimately give businesses time to recover from the negative effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Under this loan facility, MSMEs with revenues not exceeding $425 million per annum will be able to access the loans through participating financial institutions for working capital support, new capital expenditure projects, debt consolidation, refinancing of high interest rate business loans, business overdrafts, and business credit cards. Also, the purchase of real estate for use by the business is also permitted under this facility. The features of this facility include, but are not limited to the following. A loan limit per sub borrow of $10 million. The maximum interest rate to the MSME is 5% per annum and fixed on the reducing balance. Repayment is over a period not exceeding eight years, and the DBJ is also willing to facilitate a maximum moratorium on principle of 12 months. And finally, the DBJ will fund up to 90% of the project cost. However, the MSME must provide a 10% contribution towards the overall project cost. So there you have it, the DBJ's three new exciting products, which are available to all sectors. The DBJ Go Digital Voucher, which businesses can access 100% up to a maximum of 300,000 for digital transformation services. The DBJ MSME Go Digital Loan, which offers sub borrowers up to 800000 at 2% over three years to access digital transformation software and hardware. And finally, the DBJ MSME Recovery Loan, which allows businesses to access up to $10 million at 5% over eight years. These loans are available through DBJ's approved lenders, including commercial banks, 
credit unions and microfinance institutions. For further product information, please visit www.dbjserve.com or contact your bank and ask for a DBJ Serve loan to help you pivot, recover, and grow. The DBJ. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The DBJ Serve with the DBJ Go Digital Loan, the DBJ Go Digital Voucher, the DBJ MSME Recovery Loan. If I heard correctly, we're talking about $300,000 grant for digitization services. You don't have to pay it back. $800,000 at 2%, up to $10 million at 5%. Can it get better than that? Thank you, Kerry, for that presentation. Again, I urge you to keep those posts on coming on or social media platforms and keep that applause going on Zoom. Now, customer experience is something that we at the DBJ are very, very big on. So we believe that our products should be relevant. And based on what I'm seeing, those three products are very, very relevant to our MSMEs, our lenders, and our suppliers. We also believe that our customers should have ease of access to our products and information. So let's look at our loans, ease of access. DBJ is actually advancing a block of funds to our lending partners. So once our lending partners have that funding and they approve your loan, they can disburse without coming back to DBJ. There is no processing required from DBJ once they have that. So that cuts out all the time or any delays you could have. Our CEF, our Credit Enhancement Facility, guarantees. Again, that's on an electronic platform. So if your loan needs collateral support, your lenders have pre-approved lines available, and they're able at the click of a button to approve the guarantee along with the loan. The voucher for technical assistance is available on a digital platform, dbjvoucher.com. MSMEs simply go on and register and choose the, the, the service provider of their choice. You don't have to wait for those. So you can go to your bank and ask for a DBJ serve loan. Go on the platform and access a DBJ Go Digital Voucher. We're working, as our MD said, with, with, with the Jamaica Computer Society to put in place a digital online marketplace where IT suppliers and MSMEs can interact and find the right solutions and providers. So, customer experience, again, is something that we're putting paramount. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, we just want to point out, our mandate is to serve you, but we cannot do it alone. A big part of our mission is to mobilize the private sector to better serve the private sector, while we at DBJ find and remove the obstacles. We've spent the last month or so engaging with our partners, as MD said, lenders, associations, suppliers about these products before bringing them to the market in order to secure a win, win, win. But why take my word for it? Let's hear from our partners in their own words. So my name is Septimus Blake and I'm the president of the Jamaica Bankers Association. The Jamaican Bankers Association is a non-profit organization. Our membership consists of eight commercial banks, one merchant bank and one building society. Our, our mission broadly is to, let's say, foster economic growth and development for the country as a whole. And more specifically, the JBA firstly promotes a safe, sound, and vibrant, and also competitive banking sector. And secondly, we seek to enhance the economic well-being of customers within the banking community. We, we do this work or advance this mission through advocacy, public education, and stakeholder engagement. So some of the difficulties that MSMEs are currently experiencing are sharp decrease in revenues, they're having significant cash flow challenges. 
they're having to make adjustments in terms of the COVID-19 health protocols, which are an additional expense um, in order to keep their employees and their customers um, safe. They're having challenges in terms of the lockdown, which is exacerbating the, the cash flow challenges um, that they are facing. And they are also facing challenges in terms of um, their employees as it regards to, you know, whether do they keep continue to keep their staff or they continue to lay off. And we see this as, you know, this is a significant negative impact. And many of the SMEs which we are speaking to at this point in time have told us that um, their chances of survival um, are deteriorating as the, you know, the, the crisis unfolds. So significant cash flow challenges in one word. The Minister of Finance and the DBJ have collaborated under the SERF program to launch two new loan facilities totaling three billion. And these are designed to help MSMEs recover from the COVID-19 pandemic and become far more resilient. And then secondly, to accelerate the digital transformation of MSMEs. The objectives of the DBJ SURF program aligns with the JBA's objectives of fostering economic growth and development. The Jamaica Bankers Association stands ready to support MSMEs to recover from the impact of the pandemic on their businesses and to support their transition to the digital economy. Get your businesses back on track with DBJ SURF. Hi, I'm Jackie Sharp, Vice President of the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica. The PSOJ is a membership organization comprising of individuals, associations, and companies ranging from micro to large. Our mandate is to create and support and advocate for an enabling environment for our members to grow and thrive. And we're proudly celebrating 45 years of doing so as we firmly believe in the value of building a productive and competitive private sector. Now, an important part of our efforts is to assist as best as possible to afford each member, including our micro, small and medium sized members, the tools and opportunities to thrive within our economy. We conducted a survey, the PSOJ conducted a survey in the early stages of the pandemic, uh, and we discovered that our MSME struggled with adapting to the rapidly evolving digital marketplace due primarily to lack of human and economic capital. Uh, many of our small businesses were affected by limited cash flows with decreased sales um, and you know the many restrictions in place to limit movement of individuals and the reduced operating hours. Um, in addition, as banks continue to tighten up during the pandemic, the access to finance and management of loans proved increasingly challenging for our MSME members. Well, we believe that the DBJ SERP program is an exceptionally innovative and perfectly timed response to the needs of our SMEs, who we, who we know are an, an essential force in our economy. The strategic allocation of funds through the SERP program is a well-needed boost to our MSMEs who are still coping with the impact of the pandemic. So making $1 billion available for MSMEs to access through the Gold Digital Loan Facility is a much needed boost as now more than ever, businesses need the capacity to become fully digital operators. This will allow them to adapt in an ever-changing global marketplace and remain competitive. The PSOJ witnessed firsthand the eagerness of our MSMEs to go digital following our seminar last year, where the DBJ also played a critical role. The additional 200,000 Go Digital voucher grant further demonstrates putting actions in place to support what all research has shown. It's time for our MSMEs to go digital. At a time when many businesses are constrained by limited cash flow, we are fully supportive of the 2 billion MSME recovery loan facility. This loan facility to be used for business expansion, pivoting to take on new opportunities, or even refinancing high cost debt is a critical surge of energy needed by this very critical sector. And we're certain that this will be welcomed by our MSMEs who have been particularly hard hit by the pandemic. We encourage all our members to review and take full advantage of the opportunities being provided by the DBJ through this product. My name is Donovan 
webinar. I'm president of the Micro, Small and Medium Size Entities Alliance. We're primarily a business services organization and a lobby group that lobby for a better business environment for Jamaican MSMEs in the economic space. We have been experiencing very difficult times during the COVID pandemic, primarily because we see a dramatic reduction in our revenues based on the COVID requirements. Primary one is lockdowns. When there is lockdowns, no customers can come in. There is a reduction in revenue, a general reduction in businesses. We have our monthly commitments, our bills have to pay, our loans have to be paid. Um, our general commitments require cash, which becomes very scarce when there is a downturn in business. So the SERP program being offered by the DBJ is an idea whose time has come. The provision of financing, not just financing, but very cheap, very affordable financing, is what the MSMEs during this COVID pandemic would have required to at least see their business through these very difficult times. 800,000 for the digitization of your business, for procuring new and modern equipment, and for the upgrading of your e-commerce is absolutely wonderful. $10 million being allowed for debt consolidation. So for all those high interest rate loans, the people who have lived in their credit cards during the pandemic because of the reduction in revenue, lived in overdraft, lived in those high interest rate options, have the opportunity now to take some of the pressure off their businesses and basically, you know, have a low payment per month for eight years with a one year moratorium. That's a no brainer. That's something every MSME should jump on board and take advantage of. The DBJ SERP program presents a wonderful opportunity for MSMEs to pull themselves out of very difficult situations created by the COVID pandemic and should be grasped with both hands by MSMEs in Jamaica. Get your business back on track with DBJ SERP. Hi, I'm Stacy Hines, and I'm president of Jamaica's Technology and Digital Alliance, which is formerly the Jamaica Computer Society. And the vision of the Alliance is to enable people and businesses by providing access, influence, and empowerment through the use and leverage of technology. Some of the challenges that the JTDA members have been dealing with during this time has really been gaining access to individuals who are having their own challenges with doing business online. And even beyond doing business online or that e-commerce focus, there is also the challenge that many SMEs face with knowing what type of technology they need to digitally transform their companies or just understanding you know, what type of solutions would help them with doing business in a way that is more effective and efficient and also builds the capacity inside of the entity for them to do business well. And so we are having the challenge of uh, finding and ensuring that these persons know that they have solution providers available to them. And they are having the challenge of knowing, you know, well, where do I start? Um, what type of help do I need? Now, the original response that the Alliance created to trying to ensure that MSMEs had access to support that they needed from technology vendors was to, to participate in the Go Digital initiative that was being led primarily by the PSOJ in conjunction with the DBJ. And coming out of that, the SERV program was introduced because we recognized that one of the areas that we needed to amplify was the affordability of technology services and solutions. Through the DBJ SERV program, we now have access to amazing loan opportunities that are not only flexible, but provide enough funding capacity to allow MSMEs to fine tune what they need and to be able to pay for that service and support through the Alliance's vendors, as well as giving them the support that they need in helping to identify exactly what their requirements are and how each 
technology vendor or solution can meet the needs that they have identified. DBJ's SERV program provides the capacity and the capability for MSMEs to jumpstart their digital transformation journey. So again, there you have it in their own words. We have engaged our partners and they're on board. We thank Mr. Septimus Blake, president of the Jamaica Bankers Association, Ms. Jacqueline Sharp, pres vice president of the private sector organization, Mr. Donovan Wignall, president of the MSME Alliance, and Mrs. Stacy Hines, president of the Jamaica Computer Society. I want to just amplify two things, a point made by our MD and by Stacy Hines. IT suppliers, there's a billion dollars coming your way in six months, over the next six months. We at DBG are urging you to jump on this opportunity to create value for your or MSME clients through the services that you offer. In addition, we want to use this, as MD said, to stimulate a vibrant business-to-business -business market that will outlive the six-month facility. So, in that regard, we are working with the JTDA to build that digital marketplace where suppliers can register their services, MSMEs can educate themselves, identify prior priority needs, be matched with suppliers, and we're actually hoping to have that up and running in October. But you'll hear more about that later on. Our keynote speaker for this afternoon will be our Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Dr. The Honorable Nigel Clark. Dr. Clark is a man of many accomplishments spanning academics, business, public service, philanthropy. Among his many accomplishments, he co-founded one of the Caribbean's first private equity funds. He has had an outstanding career as a COO and CFO and vice chairman of one of the largest Jamaican conglomerates, driving their expansion across over 30 countries and into sectors including IT and telecoms. He has served on several private sector boards in that time. In 2012, at the age of about 40, he was recognized by the PSOJ and awarded the 50 Under 50 Business Leadership Award. He has been founding chairman of the National Youth Orchestra, a philanthropic organization that empowers youth through music. Driven by his passion to serve Jamaica, he later entered the public sector, serving on several boards as Ambassador for Economic Affairs, Senator. He was elected Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Northwestern and appointed Minister of Finance in 2018. In addition to being described as a steady hand, he has demonstrated his passion for unlocking economic opportunities for a wide cross-section of Jamaicans. In that regard, he has partnered with DBJ on several programs to support MSMEs. For example, in 2019, along with the DBJ, he was there at the relaunch of our credit enhancement facility. In 2020, he launched the Big E program along with DBJ. And now in 2021, here to launch the DBJ Serve Jamaica program. Please join me in welcoming Dr. The Honorable Nigel Clark, Minister of Finance and the Public Service, to deliver the keynote address. Please welcome Dr. Clark. Thank you, uh, Mr. Master of Ceremonies, and, and good afternoon to you, and good afternoon to uh, Milton Reynolds, uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Development Bank of Jamaica, as well as to all uh, executives and directors of the DBJ, uh, members of the MSME community, of the financial sector, and of the media. I am very excited and pleased to see uh, that this collaboration between the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service and the Development Bank of Jamaica is bearing fruit today with this launch of the DBJ Serve uh, Jamaica uh, product launch of some very exciting and innovative product, products. As uh, Milverton mentioned earlier, uh, this is $3 billion of financing 
uh, that needs to go uh, through, to be channeled through a wide range of institutions, financial institutions, towards MSMEs uh, before the end of March of this fiscal year. So that is certainly good news, but it's a lot of work. Uh, we are meeting today using the, the benefits of technology. And in many ways that demonstrates the ethos and the values of this time that life uh, goes on despite the pandemic and business has to go on despite the pandemic. We have no option uh, but to learn to live with the realities of COVID-19 even as uh, we protect ourselves. And that's what I am doing here today. Uh, I, in observing uh, COVID-19 protocols, I'm unable to be with you uh, right you know, today. Uh, if it were tomorrow, then yes, I could, but not today. So I wanna probably you know, start by acknowledging how difficult an environment it is to operate in. The COVID-19 pandemic has definitely complicated life in Jamaica and around the world. It has had primary effects, secondary effects, tertiary effects. It has had socioeconomic effects. It affects our children and it affects grandparents. It affects those who work in government and those who work in business. But we have no choice as a society, as a country, uh, to forge ahead with confidence and optimism about the future. With the full knowledge that if we do all the right things, Jamaica will emerge from this pandemic stronger and indeed that is exactly what we intend to do to recover stronger. Now, we today are celebrating, you know, the benefits of good policy. As I would have said in my budget presentation, good policy pays dividends and pays dividends particularly at times when we experience economic shocks. Good policy, requires us to think not only for today, but to think for tomorrow. Good policy requires us to think about current generations and generations to come. And good policy requires us to always take account of our vulnerabilities. And Jamaica, like many small countries in our region, we face multiple vulnerabilities. And if we are to be able to move ahead continuously in a continuous upward trajectory without starting and stopping, we have to take account of those vulnerabilities and incorporate them into our plans. Now, good policy does not promise that there will be no challenges. The nature of life from the dawn of civilization, from humans first emerge, has been a journey of sequential challenges or challenges in parallel. That is the definition of life. What we want, however, is that the government of the country has the flexibility to respond to challenges when they occur. We have not been able to do so in the past. Shocks and economic shocks, shocks like the COVID crisis, but make no mistake about it, economic shocks come in various shapes and forms. We have had shocks that have come through commodity prices, commodity price movements. We've had shocks that have come from terrorist attacks, from trade tensions, from geopolitical uh, occurrences. And those shocks lead or they precipitate further economic crisis, a crisis in our balance of payments when we don't have enough foreign exchange, a crisis in our debt, crisis in inflation, a crisis with our financial sector. And what happens is that the initial problem, the initial shock 
is deepened and widened. We are seeing that play out today in many countries around the world. In our own region, we're seeing uh, Suriname I spoke about a few months ago. We're seeing other countries who are unable to pay their public sector bill. We're seeing other small states such as Sri Lanka who pre-pandemic grew at a rate multiples of what Jamaica was growing at. But due to the nature of this crisis, and even though their economic downturn last year was only three and a half percent, whereas Jamaica fell by, contracted by 10%, Sri Lanka today is in a destabilized uh, position. Now, we don't say these things or discuss them to rejoice in anyone's suffering. God knows we have been there too many times before. But we say this to keep, we recount these realities and these facts to ensure we remain, remain focused on objectives that are consistent with good policy over time. And good policy that's not necessarily uh, responding to what is popular at a particular point in time, but good policy that is rooted in being uh, balanced and in being measured and that takes account of our vulnerabilities. And we are seeing the fruit of that approach. The economy is projected to have started the recovery process with an expansion of 12.9% for the first quarter of this year, April to June of 2021, as compared with last year. Now, some will say, wait a minute, you're comparing with a low base. Well, of the 188 countries in the world, every single one of them, to the best of my knowledge, had a decline in the first quarter, April to June of last year. If it were only a low base, then we would expect all countries of the world to register growth of 12.9% in the first quarter. But what we're seeing is quite different. We're seeing countries that experience much sharper declines than Jamaica did. Uh, countries in the Caribbean had economic contractions of 18% and 24% and 15%. And not in any particular order. I'm talking about Barbados and Seleucia and Antigua and Aruba, countries in our neighborhood, had economic declines far greater than ours. Yet for the first quarter, our economic expansion far exceeds, is projected rather to far exceed what some of those countries have reported. Barbados, for example, has reported a first quarter expansion of 5.5%, which makes the point that I'm making. So there is more that accounts for this recovery. And what it is, is that Jamaica has been able to maintain macro stability throughout this crisis. And we've had the flexibility to respond to the economic shock. We're seeing improvements in other areas as well. The employment numbers are inching upwards. Of course, current events could affect that somewhat, but the last report had unemployment uh, trending downwards at 9%, still away from uh, the lows that we had achieved before. And in case, you know, there are doubters who doubt how could the economy expand by 12.9%? How the BOJ is projecting growth of between 7 and 10% for this year? How is that? Well, you need to look no further than the performance of government revenues. Government revenues tells you everything. And the revenues for the first uh, three or four months of this year have performed exceptionally well. For the first... Uh, Quarter revenues are up by $24 billion, $23.6 billion to be precise, which is good news. Now, it doesn't mean that we are out of the crisis because last year we lost $74 billion of revenues. So we still have somewhere to go before we can consider ourselves out of this crisis. But the good news is there for us to see that by maintaining disciplined policy choice, by sticking to our principles and having the flexibility to respond to the crisis, that offers us the best possible opportunity 
for a quick and sharp recovery from the effect of COVID-19. We're seeing that so far and what the projections so far point to the possibility of a V-shaped recovery, which would be good news for all well-thinking Jamaicans. Now, the fruit of all of that allows us the flexibility to respond to the crisis. And there is hardly a place that is deserving or a sector is deserving of more of a response than the MSME sector. And today we're pleased to launch the $3 billion DBJ Sir Jamaica program, which is geared towards providing financial support to our micro, small, and medium-sized businesses who have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is a direct collaboration, joint venture between the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service and the DBJ in the form of a loan from the Ministry of Finance to the DBJ, which would have been a part of our budgetary uh, approvals from Parliament earlier in this year. Now, MSMEs face a particular challenge at this point in time, as some of your earlier speakers would have highlighted. COVID has delivered a massive economic shock. Uh, we had a demand and supply shock initially, demand shock in that demand had to stay away because of health protocols. And in some cases with lockdowns, we have introduced or reintroduced a demand shock to the MSME sector. There's also been a supply shock in that supplies are difficult to come by. There's been uh, a tension in, in the supply chains and in logistic channels. And this is causing massive disturbance to MSMEs. The health protocols, uh, largely speaking, and the distancing requirements and otherwise, uh, serve to interrupt and disrupt the activities of MSMEs. And as a result, uh, medium-sized businesses, small businesses, micro-businesses are, some of them experiencing declining revenues. Have to, they have to support their employees and make decisions to retain or not retain. And some of them are indeed facing survival challenges. But the policy response of the government is to provide financial support to MSMEs in a way that allows them to uh, withstand the pressures brought by the pandemic. We know that MSMEs are the backbone of the Jamaican economy. In fact, uh, they're the backbone of the, of the global economy. Uh, MSMEs <coughs> constitute the main business in most countries and play a critical important role in, in building an inclusive and, and resilient economy. It's estimated that uh, certainly the classified, uh, when you look at all the uh, companies in Jamaica, uh, about 97% uh, of all registered businesses are in the MSME sector. So by number, they constitute a large part of the Jamaican uh, sort of company base. In terms of their employment contribution in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, it is estimated that MSMEs uh, are responsible for the vast majority of employment. And therefore, the vibrancy of the MSME sector is critical. And in many ways, the stability that we work hard to achieve is a stability that's been designed to uh, invigorate and to provide the foundation from which MSMEs can spring and can grow and can flourish. And therefore, we have to be concerned at this time when MSMEs are particularly affected by the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, around the world, we have seen, and it's not rocket science, that a crisis that prevents people from congregating and from moving and from socializing in a normal way, a crisis that provides supply shocks and demand shocks from time to time, the most resilient strategic response is a response that takes businesses online, takes businesses from a brick and mortar presentation and allows them to interface with their colleagues, with their suppliers, with the general public 
through a digital format. And the COVID-19 pandemic has illustrated this in graphic ways that I don't need to recount. But we have seen how firms that specialize in the provision of online services have grown astronomically during this COVID period. Now, and we've seen where for many businesses, certainly internationally, the e-commerce portion of their sales mix has grown at several uh, notches above their normal bricks and mortar growth. In fact, it has been quite uneven, the growth between uh, the growth of uh, e-commerce delivery versus normal delivery. And hence the strategic response of the government of Jamaica that we celebrate here with the launch of the DBJ Surge program. And again, what I spoke about earlier is that good policy allows the flexibility to respond to the crisis at hand, because the crisis we face today is a different crisis from the one that came about as a result of the global financial crisis in 2009. And it's different from the one that we had with the September 11 shocks and different from the Lumina crisis in 1986 and so on. And we have to innovate and deliver policies and products that meet the crisis that we face today. And the Serve Jamaica, the DBJ Serve Jamaica product portfolio meets the crisis that MSMEs face today. We are, by virtue of this portfolio of products, encouraging and we are proselytizing to MSMEs and saying to them, here's an opportunity to take your business and to give it, uh, to digitalize the business and therefore make it more accessible to customers in a way that does not require physical interaction. I'm very excited and pleased about the diversity of products. The first being the Go Digital Grant, uh, a voucher. This is money that does not need to be returned to the DBJ. It's a grant to the MSMEs of up to $300,000, where businesses with sales less than $75 million can use these proceeds to digitalize their business and to transform their business by acquiring the appropriate software business intelligence software or software that allows them to uh, handle uh, customers or software that allows them to deal with their HR or their accounting needs and therefore put them in a more resilient position to face this pandemic. There's the $1 billion Go Digital Loan Facility, a loan facility of uh, up to $800,000 for each MSMEs with sales less than 425 million. And again, a loan that will be priced at 2% fixed, 2% fixed over a period of three years. This is the government of Jamaica responding to the crisis at hand and saying to the MSME sector, here are resources for you at this time that can allow you to adjust, to transform, and to strategically respond to the crisis that is faced. And then the third component is a $2 billion MSME recovery loan. And this is a loan that is absolutely uh, priced and designed for the challenges that are faced today. As a result of the cash flow difficulties and the burdens and the revenue declines that some MSMEs are facing as a result of the pandemic, uh, that cash flow stress shows up in uh, debt service requirements, and in some cases, inability to meet them. This fixed loan at 5%, which is a price that MSMEs would normally be able to access, can be used to address cash flow deficiencies and to refinance existing debt that might be too onerous to undertake at this time. And this loan can go up to a size of $10 million. So together, $3 billion available to MSMEs that needs to be drawn down over the next 180 days. That's quite a challenge for the MSME sector uh, to say, sorry, by quite a challenge, what I mean, I am challenging the MSME, MSME sector to uh, approach your financial institutions and request these loan products. Uh, the, strategy of the DBJ, which is a strategy that has worked, 
is to use a variety of channels to get these products to consumers. The channels include a traditional challenge of commercial banks and merchant banks, as well as non-traditional channels of finance houses, uh, credit unions, and microcredit organizations. And I want to make an appeal to financial institutions uh, in any of those spaces, whether it be a credit union or a microcredit institution or uh, a commercial bank to sign up to the DBJ's program, download uh, or access uh, the three of these products and some of which can work together depending on the sales level of the organization and market and make them available to your client base. And I would say to the MSME sector, to the MSME organization, ensure that your members are aware of these products and that when they go to the institution that they ask for them. And if the institution doesn't have it, go to the, another one that does. We have made the, the cost of switching easy and affordable by abolishing the Avalorum stamp duty on, uh, on loan products. So the switching costs are much, uh, well, don't exist in the way they existed before. This is the, an example of the government of Jamaica in addition to uh, responses that we have had in other segments of the economy, grants that we have had uh, for, the, uh, for the disabled, for, the, for farmers, for the unemployed, with the set cash grants and the support given to 50,000 Jamaicans over the past 12 months with a monthly unemployment uh, support grant, as well as uh, grants based on occupational groups uh, over you know, 15,000, sorry, 25,000 total uh, licensed taxi operators and, uh, and other persons in the transport sector would have received grants earlier this year. And the list goes on. I can't mention all of the grants under the CARE program. But what we want to do at this point in time, what we celebrate here today is a response of the government of Jamaica to the MSME sector with $3 billion of financial support uh, that's available over the next 180 days. Jamaica is doing well. Uh, Jamaica is benefiting from good policy and the dividends of good policy are evident. We are so far recovering ahead of our peer group uh, countries. Our revenues are being restored. There's still a long way to go. The pandemic is here and it's not going away anytime soon. We have to learn to live with COVID and the government of Jamaica, what you have from the government is a commitment that we will continue to innovate in a way that supports the social and economic recovery of Jamaica. And today is a prime example of the DBJ serve product portfolio that I encourage all MSMEs to access and our financial institutions who are partnering with us to take forward and to market with, uh, with uh, fervor and with vigor and with excitement because the future is, is positive if we do the right things. And I know with your support and with DBJ's leadership with this product portfolio, we will uh, be able with MSE, MSME sector to withstand and to endure the shock brought on by COVID and to recover stronger than we were before. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dr. Clark, for those rousing comments. Uh, one, we've seen the steady hand again at display in keeping the economy stable, putting us in a position to, in many instances, pivot, recover, and setting the stage for us to grow. So can we see those, that applause all on Zoom and social media going up for the minister? That's how we do it in the virtual space these days. So thank you very much, Minister. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The Minister has kindly consented to do 15, up to 15 minutes of questions and answers. So at this point in time, we're going to open the floor on Zoom to the media houses in the first instance. We're asking media practitioners to identify yourselves and your organization to first use the raised hand feature, you will be, you'll be, your mic will be opened and you identify yourselves. We're going to take perhaps three questions at a time 
and then we'll have those responses. Um, the first question that I saw coming in uh, is from Nikisha Walters. So you may ask your question, Nikisha. Okay, until Nikisha gets queued up, um, any other media practitioner on, on the Zoom platform may be free to raise your hand and ask questions. We have one question, Minister, on social media. Well, one of the many questions on social media. And they're asking, can the duty on computers be removed for now? Hi, there are no duties on computers. Uh, computers attract 0% duty uh, on importation of the port. Thank you, Minister. Thanks for that response, Minister. Um, so again, any, any queries from the media? Um, there being no queries at this point in time, it seems like we've covered every possible angle, and there's really not much more to add. So, we're having, a, we're having one question come through. Yes, I'm hoping it's, um, I'm not in the media, but I just wondered, I mean, congratulations on such an outstanding initiative. I am Kerry Wallace, Executive Director of the TEF, and, and we have quite a few initiatives for SMTEs ourselves, but I, I was curious, I, I noticed a short window of, uh, of, 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 what is it, three months um, or four months. And uh, I was just a little concerned. I could understand if it was through the DBJ administering the, the, the loans and so on. But it, when you start relying on the commercial banks as a, as a third party, uh, I just wonder if that window will be enough to get the, the kind of take up knowing that traditionally, um, you know, I guess it depends on the criteria, the requirements um, that would qualify you for the, for the facility. Um, it may be a case where that window may, may appear short. I, in my private application, have applied for loans that have taken longer than that. So I just wanted to see what initiatives were put in place to, to eliminate some of the, the time it takes to process loans. Okay, thanks for that question, Kerry. Uh, just, to, just to highlight also, so we've, at the DBJ, we have been engaging with our lenders, MSMEs, suppliers, associations over the last month plus on this facility. As our managing director indicated in his opening remarks, we have about eight institutions already lined up to access the funding, uh, $700 million identified that they're seeking to draw down. And the beauty of it is they, we are able to disburse that funding to them as a block up front. They process those loans on their own. They access the guarantees on their own without coming back to DBJ. Um, the feedback we've been getting from our institutions is that they're very excited about it. They're very sold, as you'd have heard the president of the Bankers Association speak. They've fully seen the benefit of digitalization for the MSME customers, as well as the MSME recovery line, which allows several things to happen, uh, refinancing of overdrafts, credit cards, um, expansion, of, expansion projects, whether it's working capital or capex, at an incredible interest rate of 5% for up to eight years. So we do believe that there will be strong demand for that. We have a follow-up. Well, we have a question. I see Nikisha Walters is back online from, I believe it's Jamaica Social. Um, can we open her microphone? Good afternoon, Mr. Galbraith. Good afternoon. 
and everyone, thank you for acknowledging me, Nikisha Walters, CEO for Wilco Finance Limited. It's not a question. I just wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge and congratulate the DBJ, along with the Ministry of Finance, for their quick response to MSEs, MSMEs during this unprecedented time. And just to say that Wilco Finance looks forward to partnering with the DBJ to allowing the MSMEs to pivot, recover, and eventually achieve growth. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Nikisha. And we're very happy that you're on board and you've actually drawn funding out of the facility. So we encourage your customers, customers who want to access the funding, to reach out to you at Wilco Finance and you know, you're already on board and you have funding available. So thank you for that. Uh, I see where Jamaica Social has a question. So Jamaica Social, I'm not sure who from Jamaica Social, but can you identify yourself and ask, direct your question to whom you wish to respond? Please go ahead, Tommy. Okay. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes, we are. Okay, I am Cassius Watson for Jamaica Social. Um, two questions. What what category or what type of um, revenue monthly or yearly earning per company falls under the category of a small business? What what type of inflows or would would, would fall under that determination when it comes to a business? Um, just to need a little more clarity on that. Do you have a cutoff or an entry point? Of, of, of sorts. And the other question goes to the minister, um, Mr. Clark. Um, we've seen the Jamaican dollar revaluing close to about $5 in the past couple of days, especially under these lockdown restrictions. What do you account or think, do you believe is accounting for this revaluation? Um, we've, we've come all the way from, I believe, 155, somewhere there, 156, and we're now down to 149 or somewhere there. Um, I, I'm curious as to what are your thoughts on the revaluation and what's fueling that? Thanks. Minister, I think, would you be prepared to go first? Yeah, sure. Well, you know, we have a market system in, uh, you know, for, the, for foreign currency in Jamaica, um, I don't generally like to comment on markets. You know, it's like asking me what's happening with the stock price of, you know, Red Stripe or, well, I guess they're not listed publicly anymore, but the stock price of some widely held share. Uh, I would, you know, I wouldn't want to comment more than saying we have a market, the price, price goes up and down. Uh, it'd be good if as much news is made of it when it, you know, is on a downward trend as is made when it's up. Uh, so thank you for noting that it's actually on a appreciation trend, but I, I you know, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to be caught into speculating uh, on that. If, if you don't understand, you know, there are a lot of people who are experts in this area in the private sector who, whose opinion, uh, you know, you might want to see. Thank you, Minister. Uh, this, the second question regarding the size of a small business. So the government of Jamaica through the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce has a national um, standard which is adopted by all of us really. Um, a micro business has revenues up to $15 million. A small business has revenues that go up to $75 million and a medium-sized business goes up to $425 million. We see another question coming in uh, regarding the, well, this comes in from Chris Politico. When you go to the commercial bank, you're generally frustrated. Uh, what will the DBJ do differently to ensure that SMEs are not frustrated? There's another question that says uh, on YouTube from People Transformer, have there been discussions with the banks regarding relaxing some of the requirements, example, financial statements, business plans uh, required to qualify? So just to point out that in the last 
within the last month based on our consultations with our SMEs, our lenders, DBJ actually relaxed some of the requirements of our voucher for technical assistance. So just to point out, we have a voucher for technical assistance program with over uh, 30 services available to SMEs where just like the Go Digital voucher, you're able to get a grant for a range of business services, whether these are getting your financial statements done, uh, getting business plans done, etc. And for the period up to March 2022, for the period that this SURF facility is in place, we have relaxed some of the terms of those vouchers to make it much easier where persons can access up to 100% financing up to $250,000 for those vouchers. So we believe that there should be no obstacle to a small business that wants to access financing where there is a requirement for financial records or plans to be put in place because the voucher provides a grant that allows you to access those. Going down the list in terms of uh, any questions that we're seeing here, uh, we see a question from John Grant. When will we see financial institutions start supporting the startup and funding of MSMEs? On Facebook from Eunice Watkins, how can I access funds for expansion of building and machinery? So again, as, as the MD indicated, the minister indicated, you just need to act, go to your lending institution, present your, the plan, your cash flows. Clearly, you have to indicate that, what it is that you're going to do. Um, DBJ has guarantees available that can support you if there's a lack of collateral as well. So we do have a lot of facilities um, available to support you in this journey. Um, about the interest rates for the loans, and as we indicated, the 800,000 Go Digital loan is available at 2%, and the, the MSME recovery loan that goes up to $10 million is available at 5%. Okay, so we have a question coming from Oral Shaw on Zoom. So we can unlock Mr. Shaw for that. Um, thanks very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, uh, Oral Shaw from the Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce. We are very happy about the facilities being offered to our MSMEs and, and very thankful for the Ministry of Finance for making this available. I am somewhat concerned about the short time span for the full take up of, this, of these facilities, just about five months um, to, to access these um, facilities. And um, if we're going to focus primarily on credit unions and the capital, private capital providers, the banks. I'm somewhat concerned whether or not we might be able to make these funding available to MSMEs by the end of March next year. As such, I want to know if consideration is being given uh, or are being given to um, making this these funding available to microfinance institutions given the fact that to a large extent uh, the mfis are the go-to capital providers for msme funding rather than the, the the commercial banks so is there any consideration to consider mfis as part of the channels to make these funding available to MSMEs? Let, let me go with that for a second. So thank you for that question, uh, Oral. You, where are you calling from, Oral? 
Uh, the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce. Yeah. MSME, MSME unit. Yes, ab absolutely. As you'd have heard Milbert and Reynolds when he spoke, uh, he listed some of the institutions that have already signed up. And among those he listed were uh, microcredit institutions. But it, it requires the institution to sign up with the DBJ. So the extent that, you know, that your unit is in touch with all of these microcredit entities, encourage them to sign up with the DBJ so they can draw down uh, funding and provide that funding to their customers. Okay, and what, what we want is the widest possible distribution. And with the market credit institutions, we can reach uh, deep into the MSME space. Now, it is necessary to go through some kind of intermediary because at the end of the day, these are taxpayers' funds, right? So there are always two sides in our, in our policy, right? Yes, we want to reach MSMEs, right? But we're doing so with taxpayer dollars. And we have to account for taxpayer dollars. We can't simply just give, you know, so the DBJ has one office in one place. They can't reach the thousands of MSMEs without the assistance of operations that have a retail presence, whether it be banks or microcredit entities or credit unions. They are in touch with the customers. So DBJ goes through them. And by going through them, they have, you know, there's an administrative capacity Right, to ensure that, that the funds are properly treated with and we can have some accountability for the funds, but then they go widely. And what we want is a push and a pull. We want the financial institutions broadly defined, including microcredit, to be pulling down the funds from DBJ. But we also want you through your uh, unit to be making the MSMEs aware that this exists and going and asking for it. It's a fantastic set of products. And, and um, Oral, you, you're on mute. And the reason why we're saying 180 days is we budget on an annual cycle. Right. So this was not DBJ funds. If this was DBJ funds, it'd be one thing. But this is funds that the ministry is lending to the DBJ. Right. We can see what happens at the end of the year. But it's, a, you know, on a budgetary cycle, the disbursement. You know, we want the disbursement to happen this year, right? I can't hear you. You're on mute. Right. Sorry about that. Um, and by extension, the Exim Bank is also being considered as, as, as part of the modality for the, for the availability of these funds to MSMEs as well. The, as an, uh, the Exim Bank. Uh, that, you, you need to talk to the DBJ about that. But we're, what we want to do is to go from government to private. Okay. Right. Thank so you. From, from DBJ to uh, the private institutions. And we need your help to generate awareness about this. Yeah? Definitely. We have started that process already, Minister. Please. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you for those comprehensive responses, Minister. Um, at this time, we're throwing out, I guess, one last opportunity. For any questions uh, regarding the program or for the minister, um, and we're not seeing any hands pop up, so we're going to count down five, four, three, two, one. So, ladies and gentlemen, we Really thank you for taking the time out today to join us for this forum. We thank Minister, thank you Minister, Dr. The Honorable Nigel Clark, Minister of Finance and the Public Service, for one, providing this facility to DBJ so that we're able to unlend it to the private sector as you, you've indicated. Um, the timeline that you've given us is very tight, but that has forced us to be very creative and very and employ all the means available. We've engaged our partners, the lenders, the MSME associations and suppliers, and brought them on board. So we're very, very, I mean, we're, we're convinced that this funding will move. 
as, we've in, as our managing director indicated, uh, eight institutions have already indicated their interest. Four institutions have already drawn funds. Some of those have already disbursed to clients. Um, and he named a few of those institutions, which in fact include microfinance institutions and credit unions. So there's a very wide range of institutions. On that note, again, just on behalf of the DBJ, we want to thank everyone for joining us today, especially our Minister of Finance. I don't know if you have any closing words that you want to, to give us, Minister, or whether we can wrap. Thank you for the fantastic work you've done with, with the launch. What we want to see now, you know, oftentimes you hear the, the reactionary response, oh, you know, uh, what's the government doing? Nothing from SMEs, et cetera, et cetera. What I want to make sure is that everybody knows about this program. Okay, so you need to use every medium available to you so that the people of Jamaica, the MSMEs of Jamaica are aware of the provision being made by the government of Jamaica for the MSME sector. And sometimes people hear of financial institutions as a Lord of mercy or whatever, let them understand the range of institutions that will have access to these funds and where people can go if they want to get these products. It's critically important that there is big awareness of it. So you need to be out there talking it up and make sure that, uh, and I see the website here, www.dbjserve.com. But you need to be out there. You need to be on the talk show programs and let people know of this wonderful initiative. Okay? So I, I'm leaving that charge with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. And we'll definitely be executing that. We'll be having over the next three months an, an intensive marketing campaign on all media channels, social Otherwise, as we said, we've engaged our business association partners. We're planning webinars where we'll be engaging the membership of those associations along with suppliers um, of IT services. We're working with the Jamaica Technology and Digital Assi Alliance to create that marketplace where suppliers and MSMEs will engage or financial institutions are on board. So again, Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for being with us. On behalf of our managing director, board of directors, and the team at the DBJ, we thank you for being here, and we urge you, as the MD, as the minister have asked, to ensure that you go out MSMEs and go to your bank and ask for these facilities. 2%, 5%, it's available for six months, so go out and get it. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. been affected by COVID, the Development Bank of Jamaica brings you DBJ Serve to get your business back on track. DBJ Go Digital, your digital transformation loan of up to $800,000 at a super low interest rate of 2% with up to three years to repay. DBJ MSME Recovery, bounce back with this $10 million loan at 5% interest.